When you're charged with a crime in Canada, you have the right to remain silent. And that right goes right up until the trial and right to the end of the trial. For example, you never have to testify. You don't have to provide the Crown with your side of the story or evidence. Now, like any rule, there's exceptions to that rule. And I'd like to go over a few of the exceptions in, in Canadian law. The first one is when you have an alibi. Now, an alibi means you've been charged with an offense, but you know you're elsewhere in Canada or the world or Ontario, and you can prove that. For example, you're in Hawaii at the time of a break and enter. Now, when you have an alibi, uh, you have to provide that. If you want to testify at trial and for it to be accepted, by the judge. You have to provide the Crown with evidence of that alibi at a relatively early opportunity, enough of an opportunity for them to investigate that. So clearly, if you've got a great alibi, you've got plane tickets and photos of you in Hawaii at the time, you're going to want to present that early. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be presented right away, but it has to be presented in enough of a timely way so that the Crown can investigate before your trial. So there's one example. Another example is when you want to bring a what's called a constitutional argument. There's, under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, we have many freedoms in, in Canada. And one of those, for example, is the right to counsel, another is the right to be secure from unreasonable search and seizure. If you want to bring a charter argument at the trial, it's kind of not, it's part of the trial process, but it's not a trial issue really. It's a, it's a procedure that takes place within the context of the trial or before the trial. In order to do that, you have to serve the Crown with notice of that charter application in detail, your lawyer does, doing detailed factums and setting out the facts of the charter. Typically, charters have to be proven to a balance of probability. The, the onus is a bit reversed that you have to establish that. So there's an, another example of what you have to disclose to in, in advance. Other situations are if you want to apply for third party records application, that is you have counseling records that you're aware that the victim has or in your possession of them, you have to bring an application to try and introduce that and, it, and the judge will determine relevancy and you have to set out some facts that will establish whether they're relevant. So you're disclosing some stuff to the Crown that you might not normally want to, by the way, to establish those grounds. Recently, is really prompted by many trials, including the Jan Gameshi trial. If you're in possession of text records, cell phone records, Facebook, that type of thing that help you of the victim, for example, and you want to use them, you have to bring an application in advance of the trial to introduce those. And the judge will decide whether they're relevant. What's the problem with that? Well, now you lose the element of surprise. Uh, you can't you know, just surprise the victim on the stand that she said something or he said something in a text they might be able to explain why they said something. For example, they could have said, uh, I lied. They said, you know, I, I'm out to get you, I lied in a text. Well, maybe they can now explain that away in some fashion. Whereas before, as in the Jan Kameshi trial, he was able to confront witnesses right on the spot. You got the elements of surprise. They don't have a prepared statement. So these are some of the issues. You've, you've got alibi and, and third party records. There's also what's called a Seaboyer application. Now, in a sexual assault manner, matter, if you want to introduce prior sexual conduct of the complainant, for example, you had a long-standing relationship with them, uh, if you want to present that, you need to bring an application there as well. Again, you've got to disclose part of your defense. This is particularly applicable when you want to bring a mistaken belief and consent defense. And again, it, it's, it's required, but it is problematic because you have to kind of set out your defense why is it relevant? And, and you lose the element of surprise, but it's a necessary thing in many trials. So there's, those are five examples of how, what I call reverse disclosure, where you've got to disclose th certain things to the Crown in advance of the trial. But I hearken back to the general rule. In most cases, you don't have to disclose a thing. You just stay quiet about your defense and you present it at the trial, except for these exceptions.